Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awe, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with the blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. We are continuing with our series on you can change your life. This word will empower you, it will equip you, and it will, make, it will transform your life. So get ready, let's get into God's word. To rise above it. That's what the scriptures teach us in Colossians. To strip off the old nature and to put on uh, the new. Book of Colossians, chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 5. It says, since, or since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. It's our personal responsibility. That's what makes us civilized. I, I want to consider for a moment the difference between us and animals. If, if we were told to just do what we like, we will end up like animals and will never change. Animals, all they do is walk around all day. And when they feel like eating, they bend down and they eat. And then they look up and then they eat. How many of you know there are a lot of human beings they are spending their day doing the same not in the fields but in various outlets you cannot live by what you feel you kill yourself then what animals do is where where their inclination takes them they just fall on the ground and they sleep there they lie and some people do that at work with their eyes open and then what animals do is the third step they defecate anywhere at any time even in public place because they do whatever they feel their nature tells them to do they do whatever they feel their nature tells them to do how many of you know you are not an animal and if you are to change you need to rule your nature you are not an animal if you are to change you need to rule your nature and and when you rule your nature that's when you change and you grow as a person we call it civilization but today what people are doing is they do what they like don't you judge me because i'm i'm overweight people burp in in a restaurant and when you look at them it's like what what are you looking at human rights i'm free no you are free to be an animal what civilizes us is to rule is to rule we put our hand in front of our mouth and we beg because we regulate we don't just unzip in the restaurant and 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 we against the wall we wait but where we are currently heading our society is teaching us to just be i fear for the next 40 years if jesus doesn't come obviously i'm exaggerating but you understand the principle we are not animals we have two natures and and when we allow the wild nature in us to rule we become barbarians we become animals we have to rule our nature and when we do change comes that's why when you go on holiday you can't afford to switch off because the old nature will come and control you it's interesting that in scripture when gideon was told to choose men from his army he had 10,000 men and the Lord said, I want you to watch how they drink. And then those who, who pick up the water with their hands and drink like civilized human beings, I want 
you to choose them all those who lie down and drink like like animals i want you to send them home because i don't want animals in my army i want men who know how to think and control themselves with such i can win victory we need to gather ourselves samson just gave into his lower nature and it killed him we need to rule ourselves and control our spirits the next point is we need to accept advice from the unlikely if we are going to change the blind man didn't even know who jesus was he says the one they call jesus they asked him where he is he says i don't know and so sometimes your life can change with people you don't even know how many of you know sometimes you can sit on a plane or in a bus and someone can talk to you and it will have a dramatic effect on your life they can talk to you about diet about family about career the list goes on they can share a story about healing their finances and you go home and it has a profound effect on you but sometimes we want to change but we are not open to take advice from people unless they have a position a pastor or a counselor even then we are like don't tell me what to do because they they are young and and you are older than them we've got to be open to the unlikely because wisdom is what we need to be open to not just knowledge wisdom and we get wisdom from people who speak wisdom it's very interesting that our society makes a big thing out of knowledge knowledge does not change people wisdom does wisdom comes from the word of god knowledge comes from things information what our world is telling us is if we give teenagers more knowledge about sex there won't be teenage pregnancies how many of you know there are teenage pregnancies despite what they know they know how it all works but they still do it then there's the there's the other area smoking they print on the pack smoking kills that's pretty blatant if you look you have knowledge then they have a picture of rotten teeth or lungs that have decayed visual knowledge but people still smoke and they say one day i need to get rid of this because this is killing me i know this is bad for me and then they go back into the office and then half an hour later they come back out how many of you know knowledge doesn't change you but wisdom when it comes out if you receive it it's got the potential and the power to change your life not just information the world is telling us the more knowledge we have the more we can change this world and it's a lie that's why there are government programs after government programs and things are getting worse this is what they are telling us if we give criminals an education if we educate people there won't be criminals no it's not an issue of knowledge it's an issue of behavior people are not committing crimes because they don't have knowledge they are committing crimes because they are letting their lower nature rule them because they've been told we are so free we can do what we like you can't you need to have your ear open to divine wisdom no matter which source it comes from let me share a scripture with you second Samuel chapter 20 it's a long passage and there happened to be there a rebel whose name was Sheba the son of Bikri a Benjamite and he blew a trumpet and said we have no share in David nor do we have inheritance in the son of Jesse every man to his tent O Israel so every man of israel deserted david and followed sheba the son of bikri but the men of judah from the jordan as far as jerusalem remained loyal to their king now david came to his house at jerusalem and the king took the ten and the king took the ten women his concubines whom he had left to keep the house and put them in seclusion and supported them but did not go into them so they were shut up uh, to the day of their death living in widowhood and David said to Abishai now Sheba the son of Bikri will do us more harm than Absalom take your Lord's servant and pursue him lest he find for himself 
fortified, fortified cities and, es and, and escape us. So Joab's men with the uh, shelter heights or shelter heights, forgive me, shelter heights, the uh, pelter heights, and all the mighty men went out after them. And they went out of Jerusalem to, pe to, to pursue Sheba, the son of Bikri. When they were at the large stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa before them, or Amasa came before them. Now Joab was dressed in battle armor. On, this, on, on it was a belt with a sword, fastened in its sheath at his hips. And as he was going forward, it fell out. Then Joab said to Amasa, Are you in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice the sword that was in Joab's hand, and he struck him with it in the stomach, and his entrails poured out on the ground, and he did not strike him again, thus he died. Then Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bikri. Meanwhile, one of Joab's men, Joab's men stood near Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab and, and whoever is for David, follow Joab. But Amasa wallowed in his blood in the middle of the highway. And when the, the man saw that all the people stood still, he moved Amasa from the highway to the field and threw a garment over him. When he saw that everyone who came upon him halted, when he was removed from the highway, all the people went on after all, all the people went on after Joab to pursue uh, Sheba the son of Bikri, and he went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel and 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 Beth Makar and all the Beratites. So they were gathered together and also went after Sheba. Then they came and besieged him in uh, Abel of Beth Makar, and they cast up a siege or a siege mound against the city. And it stood by the rampant, and all the people uh, who were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Take note of this. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Hear, hear, please say to Joab, Come nearby, that I may speak with you. When he, had, when he had come near to her, the woman said, Are you Joab? He answered, I am. Then she said to him, Hear the words of your maid servant. And he answered, I'm listening. So she spoke, saying, they used to talk in former times, saying, they shall surely um, they shall surely seek guidance at Abel, and so they will end disputes. I am among the peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not so. But a man from the mountains of Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bikri, by name, has raised his hand against the king, against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. So the woman said to Joab, Watch, his head will be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman, in her wisdom, went to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bikri, and threw it out to Joab. Then he blew a trumpet, and they withdrew from the city every man to his tent so joab returned to the king at jerusalem i believe that the woman spoke with wisdom she probably quoted deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 10 which says when you march up to attack a city make its people an offer of peace he probably had the wisdom of god then decided you know what she's right she might have been haggard with no makeup on but he paid attention because he had wisdom don't let the vessel that's bringing the wisdom put you off when you are open to ch when you are open change can take place who is speaking into your life at the moment that you are ignoring who is giving you financial advice it could be someone who is trying to help you someone who is speaking life you need to be open to the unlikely because sometimes it's your children but because you are older, you can receive it. They could lead you to salvation. The next point is, we must not change the unchanging. Our world is in a place of tremendous flakes because of change. 
And that's why many people are struggling with stress. Because we are trying to change that which should uh, should remain unchanged. How many of you know we need a measure of stability? I've noticed that people like old things. They even like stained windows in church. They, they, they like crosses because it gives you a feeling like things are stable. Because everything is changing. But what we are doing in our world is we are trying to change that which isn't changeable. And when you change that which isn't changeable, you cause stress. Do you know that aut autistic children can get stressed very easily? You need, to, you need to handle them very carefully. If they go into their room and things have changed, they will never settle down. They might even scream and you think what's going on. Their anchor of stability has been moved. Now they can relax. In our world, a lot of what shouldn't change is being changed. Values. So, we don't know where we are, who we are what's right or wrong. As a result, we are ending up not knowing what to change anymore. Let me give you three things that are unchangeable. When you accept these things as unchangeable, you bring stability into your life. The word of God and God. God and his word, unchangeable. Human beings, the second one. And the third one is the laws of nature. These three things don't change. The law of gravity is the law of gravity. It doesn't change. It's a fixed, permanent thing that God has created. When you accept, when you accept that, you know how the universe works. You can fly an aeroplane. You can travel to the moon. You can live your life doing business. You can plant seeds and harvest crops. It teaches you how to live life when you know what's unchanging. Human beings haven't changed. Oh, we are living in new times. We are living in new times, but, but people are the same, trust me. Just like Cain murdered Abel, people are killing each other. We are technologically superior, but we are still the same flawed, sinful people we've always been. God and his word, they don't change. When you accept these and you don't change those, then stability comes. Let me give you three things that are changing. Science is one. Medicine is the second one. Technology is the third one. Those three things are changing almost every week. I'm sure if you're listening to me today, you don't have a phone that is five years old or seven years old. No. Your mobile phone is new. When you get a mobile phone, by the time you walk out, it's old. You buy a car. You drive out of the uh, car dealership. Your car is old already. Because those things are just changing all the time. What our world is trying to do is changing everything and they even change the unchangeables. That's not what you, I mean, you should do. You should anchor to the unchangeables and change with the changeables. Then you get a change in your life that's healthy and normal and good. But they are trying to teach us in our world to change the, the, to, to change the changeables. And that's what brings instability. So. I want to encourage you, stay anchored to God and don't change the unchangeables. Don't let society corn you into thinking that because we are living in, mod in, in, in the modern world, that human beings are any different. No. I read about this woman. She's so desperate to change and be a part of today's world that uh, she had over 100 illegal operations. Tatiana Williams, she was a man who is not a woman. Um, she's had those illegal operations. She's had her breast, cheeks, bottom. In, in her bottom, in each cheek, she has more than three and a half kilograms of silicon. Friends of hers have died from it. She knows that. But she's so desperate to change with times and be accepted that she's almost killing herself with silicon. If only she acknowledged that human beings, we are all the same. Even with that, in, in, in your bottom, you are not going to be respected because people don't respect fakes. So you can posture, but at the root of it, human beings don't admire fake. They would admire you if you were thin and normal and ordinary because that's how human beings are. Yes, our problem. Our grandparents don't know as much about medicine, science or, or technology. So because we are younger, we think we know better than them. 
but they know more about raising children because they understand human beings this is where our world is heading we need to understand the unchangeables and change with the changeables next point we must speak positively about change when you speak positively about change that's when you bring change into your life the only way you get saved is by speaking by confessing jesus is lord receiving him into your life and when you want to make changes in your life you have to speak those changes i can god can notice in scripture the word passover which speaks about crossing over interesting word in the hebrew it's pisa p-e-s-a-h or p-e-s-a-c-h it's divided into two pa p-a which means mouth and s-a-c-h means talking or speaking so basically talking mouth means passover that's how you get saved you invite jesus through your talking mouth and you cross over now when you want to cross over into change you have to speak it you have to declare god's word that's why it's important to go to church and to sing i believe in god the father i believe in god the son i believe in the holy spirit these are three in one i believe in the resurrection that will rise again for i believe in the name of jesus you speak it and you know i mean that's my destiny but when you don't speak it you go back to believing i'm just an animal we all just evolved there's no god no i believe in god the father i believe in christ the son you speak and you cross over you never change unless you cross over and we need to be people who understand uh, that the name pass over is meant to be an eternal ordinance of change that's why we have communion because it's a picture of passover we change from death to life we cross over and that's our destiny we can keep crossing over don't settle for where you are today keep crossing over one last thing when israel left egypt they got to the red sea having passed over they are now on their journey they reached a place called uh, pi Haharios. interesting name right at the sea it means mouth of freedom they again had to declare that they could cross the sea Let, let's let's read it in scripture so you know what i'm talking about exodus chapter 14 verse 1 and 2 then the lord said to moses tell the israelites to turn back and uh, encamp near pi haharos between migdol and the sea they are to encamp by the sea directly opposite uh, baal zephon baal zephon moses cried out to god god said why are you crying out to me cross over and you have to cross over all the time as you make a journey and be determined that you are not going to settle where you are look at verse 13 to 15 moses answered the people do not be afraid stand firm and you see the deliverance the lord will bring you today the egyptians you see today you will never see again the lord will fight for you you need you need only to be still then the lord said to moses why are you crying out to me tell the israelites to move on there's there's an australian man his name is uh jordan tykerdis tykerdis he holds the record for losing the most weight ever in australia he lost 200 kilos that's pretty amazing he weighed 300 and 330 kilograms his broken beds chairs the front seat of his car when he was large he took over his father's business and when he did he started to indulge in fast foods convenient meals that is how he put on the kilos till eventually he got to a place where he hit desperate when he got desperate he said i was sick and tired of being sick and tired and i knew i had to do something to reclaim my life he then made up his mind that he wanted to change and when he had the realization and the pain he got a coach he got some information he began to go to the gym and he's lost 200 kilos isn't that amazing but you've got to get to the place where you want to 
when you want to and you are desperate enough you take mud on your eyes but that's the beginning of your change listen you need to decide this year that that you commit yourself to grow and you change in every area of your life you will not stagnate as a person in your career or in your work with god you you will trust god to change your life you trust god to change your income you trust god to change to change your future and your opportunities i trust that today's message has been a blessing to you and i want to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this program and i look forward to coming your way next time but always remember if you want a life that is going to be as abundant as possible without chaos and confusion you live it by god's way god bless you and have a great day thank you for watching the ultimate life television program we hope you have been blessed by the teaching tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week you are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.